Hi there, and welcome back to Age Workshop. So, a uh, couple of bits and bobs going on in this episode. Um, a little bit more mini lathe stuff, uh, not a great deal. Um, a little job for a friend of mine uh, in work. Um, we show you that, just a little finial for a key ring. Uh, we'll show you that at a later stage. And we're going to make a start on the Webster engine. I just thought, yeah, I'm, I've been doing this mini lathe for, I think, 16, 17 episodes now. And I want to start making inroads into making this Webster engine a nice winter product, project. So, uh, haven't got any material here as I was filming this episode. Uh, but since then, some material has come in, and I'll show you that at the end. So, uh, yeah, let's get on and show you what we've been doing this week. So, um, bit of the oil nipples. Um, I've gone for a point halfway between the edge of the dovetail top and the outer edge. And it's about 8mm there, so 4mm in. And I've gone 70mm from the back, so 70mm up. So I'll just show you my method. I've got my drills laid out here. So uh, just make sure I'm all locked and all on position. Yes, right, OK. Um, so first thing, spot drill, 4mm. I'll just spot it first. So three and a half mil drill all the way through. Um, it doesn't need to be that big, but the thing is, um, it gives me the opportunity, should I need to change your nipples in the future, I can drift them out from the underside. Just get that drill sorted, speed things up a little. Yeah, my parallel's out from underneath. So the reason I've gone for quite a large hole all the way through is purely so that I can eject the nipple in the future should I need to. And, well, we're going to be squirting oil through it at the bottom of there. No problems, I would have thought. Now, I have avoided the, um, the little jack and screw for the gib. I'm out the way of that with that 70 mil inch from the end, so no worries there. So that's an extra drill. Right, OK. So I may have to lift up. Yes, I do. That should do me. OK. I'm just going to touch that on there. Set a zero on my quill. Yeah, I slow down a bit. Six mil deep. So this is a 5.8 drill. Just taking the readout off my uh, off my quill. Six mil deep. Okay. So onto the next drill, 5.9. So I got this method by drilling out a piece of steel and seeing what worked. So I'm just going to get to the touch there, reset my zero, go six more from there. Okay, so that done. Blow any muck out the bottom. So this six mil reamer. Um, is it's done a hell of a lot of holes in its life. If I make the end of it up, it measures up at 5.97. So, no need for depth, I'll just go till it hits bottom. Give it a couple of tries. And out with a reamer. Okay, so I'm going to pop these back out again. Let me just get another nipple. I put the back one in. Um, I shouldn't have put the back one in, really. I should have waited to show you, because obviously I'm going to have to clean it all, um, because there could be bits of cast down in the hole and what have you. So these have got a little taper on the underside. In fact, that's a bit of a duff one. The ball's not stuck up. Let's grab a different one. Yeah, that's a better one. When you're saying that, I wasn't going to pop it out. I could have used the duff one. 
Anyway, so I'll just place that somewhere near. Get the jaws hanging out. My little chuck. Be nice and flat on the end. That's graded up and there we go. Press it in. So simple as that really. I obviously I will push these back out and clean it all up. Um maybe whether I reuse them or not, I don't know. We'll, we'll try them. So yeah, that's the two oilers. Uh let's take it out the vice. Okay, so they all come through there into the slides. Hopefully it'll find its way up into the bees. I mean, I could have gone for a 50-50 position somewhere in the middle, but hey ho um, at least there's oil in there now, which there wouldn't have been before. So, actually, those holes did clean out quite nicely. I may get away with those, just give them a blow with the A-line. But yeah, that's the two oilers in position. Um, yeah, happy days. So I need to make a little ferrule, um, basically a little finial with an M5 thread 10mm long and a hole drilled through the finial to take a key ring. Um, it's a job for one of my mates in work. So a uh, little bit of brass, I don't know what it is, 10mm, probably 3 8 I'll just face it off through. Still got a pip in the end. Here we are, gone. Let's just set a zero there. Right, so uh, looking for five mil diameter, ten mil back. Nine point six. All handball. Probably go a lot faster than this. Speed her up a bit. I'm going to size now the end that'll do. Just eyeballing this diameter. Looks to be just over six to me. Okay, we'll stop there. Set a zero on diameter. Caliber size will do for this. So, where are we at the moment? Six point. No, oh, six point five. Okay. Take point five aside off. Have another measure. I got a long piece of bar in here, and it's hanging out the back of the chuck. It's wobbling around a bit at this speed. And it's causing the lathe to shake, rattle and roll. Five point five, okay, point two five a side off. Okay, that should be somewhere in here. Five mil. There's nothing fancy about this, it's just turning guys. Let's just take that back to 10 mil on there. Set a zero on my diameter. Wind out. Okay. So we should be just over 5 mil. 4.96. Okay. I'll I'll stay with that. That'll be fine for running a die down it. So let's just pull the tool out of the way. Uh, could do with a bit of a chamfer on the end of there. Where's my chamfering tool? There she blows. Just a lead in for the die. Okay. Uh, right, I've got a die holder set up here with a 5mm die in it. Actually pre-planned which is unlike me so let's just get somewhere near I'll just wind this on by hand normally I'd use my uh, tailstock die holder but 
should be fine for this. Let's just get that on the end of it. It should keep it square. Okay, a little bit of pressure. Here we go. Just following it with the end of the tailstock, keeping the die square. Nearly there. Okay, let's have this out of the way. Seems to have come to a stop now. Unscrew it. Okay, M5, 10 mil long. So, uh, <coughs> let's just pop it out the chuck a bit more. I think I will just give myself a true diameter and part it off. Clean it up. Let's have a tiny jumper on the bottom. What have we done with our tool? There it is. Dirtying there, let's get rid of that. Okay. And part her off. So, parting tool. Uh, how long are we going to go? Yeah, I'd say that will do me. I don't know how long it is, but it'll do. Visually looks right. Okay, so that's the starting piece. Want to make a little hole there now, so basically, we're going to use the same piece of bar. Uh, let's just crew it up a bit smaller than that. I'll do face the end off. And I'm going to drill the end out and tap it M5, and I'll be able to screw the piece that I just cut off into the end of it. Okay, so I made the little mandrel and I've screwed that in there. It doesn't screw all the way in, but I'm not worried about that, but it is tight. Um, so, uh, let me just get that chuck and tap out the way. We don't need that anymore. All getting in the way a bit, getting in your way. Let's get it out of the way. There we are. Right, okay. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it. Let's come in a bit closer. Okay, so, um, I've got it screwed in with that plane diameter and I've just scratched, placed and scratched it, threw it all up again. So I want to put an undercut, almost like a ball end on this. So I'm going to dig in, I'm going to leave a flange on the bottom. I'm going to dig in here. Just with a uh, 60 degree tool in here. Just a nice big undercut. Okay, let's open that up a bit. Just 
so it's just making it a bit ornamental really. Uh, I can go smaller than that. Let's uh, bring that a bit wider. That'll do. And we'll have a big one on the end as well. I think we'll dome this. So, I want to file. Let's have a look. That's close. Get off by the feet. A bit of dirty file in there. <laughs> Just a bit of aluminium in it. Okay, let's just. Speed it up a tad. safe edge of the file and just around that bottom in as well and perhaps get a bit close to the chuck just put a radius on the leading edge of there as well okay needs a bit more here Other than polishing up, I think that'll do as a starter. Let me take you out of there and bring you around to show you where we are. So, uh, trouble getting this to focus. Okay, so uh, there it is. Needs a polish up. You can see the profile of it. Um, and it's just screwed in into this little mandrel piece here. So I need to put a hole across this now. I, I, you know what, thinking on it, I think this diameter's too big. I think I need to reduce this diameter to, whoop, to get a key ring in. Yeah, that's uh, a rethink. So I've reduced the diameter on the end considerably. I was just thinking if I drill a hole through it with the diameter it was, to get a circular key ring through it, it would have to be a really huge hole. Whereas I think now that I've, re whoop, now that I've reduced the diameter, um, we got a better chance. So uh, I just put it up in a collet block, cross-drilled it, um, put a couple of flats on either side, and fitted the appropriate key ring, and uh, there it is, a little brass finial that's going to screw into an item with a 5mm hole, which will allow it to be put on a keyring. So, uh, yeah, that's that job done. Uh, simple little thing, took five minutes, but uh, we're going to get one. So, inch and a half for the block. I've got a metric mic here. Looking for 38.1. Uh, 39.55. Okay. Take another half mil. So we haven't explained what it is. Um, right, we are talking Webster engine. Um, and this is the cylinder head bracket. Just taking some half mil cuts, I machine the other side, dropping it down to inch and a half thick. 
it's got to be two and three quarters long. That's the piece of uh, aluminium you saw me cut. And it's got to be 750 pound thick. It's 20 mil at the moment. So, lock it up. Right, 38.08, I'll call that, um, yeah, I'll call that, that's good. So just square the end up now, holding the two faces I've just machined parallel in the vise. I did put a mic end for end and it was, yeah, sort of point zero one variation end to end. Just, just squared that up. I'm going to put that face down on the parallel next and do the other end with a fly cutter. Then flip it back over and come back over this face. Who's that? Okay, that does look nice. Okay. So back to the fly cutter. Put it down on this space. Do the other end. Flip it over 180. Redo this end with a fly cutter to finish size of 2.750 inches. Good change of plan. I like the finish that much. I decided to do it with the uh, with the end mill here, so this should be the last ten foul cut to bring it to two point seven five zero inches. Okay, let's have that cutter out of the way. Wind back and we'll have a measure. So I've got Imperial mic out now, I've got a two to three. Maybe six or seven tenths under so 2.7493 something like that okay. okay let's do it I'm just uh, finishing cut decking off this one face and I'll flip it and fly cut it down to three quarter seven seven hundred and fifty five sell it off at 20 mil Every time I take it out of the vise, I'm deburring all the corners on the faces I've just cut. In fact, I might just let that run back and forth again. Put a bit of WD-40 on it. Yeah, it's just licking the surface there and uh, improving that finish, because this will be a finished finish. A finished finish. Okay, looks good. So flip it over now, do the other side after the obligatory deburring. So final cut. And hopefully that should be 750,000 thick. Just let that cut there run across there. I mean, I'm not worried if it's half that up, half that down, you know. Pretty much been aiming at plus or minus half a third. I didn't have a good look at the tolerances on the drawing, but I'm sure half a thousand of these outside dimensions is going to be fine. It's probably more like a cut the flow, the actual tolerance, but we'll see. Or I may have to make it again. So let's get the mic. Got a good mic out. Got it set on Imperial here. Seven four nine seven. 
think we'll live with that. Okay. Um, yeah, so other than the deburr, that's that blocked up. So the drawing calls for a step 313 plow deep, which is where I am now, at inch and a quarter, 1.250 from the end. So this being two and a half inches long, I can machine this until the high point is 1.250. So I've scribed the line on. Just get a touch off. I think that's where I am. Okay. I'll do a caliper measurement for this. Ooh, that's horrible in there. Klein milling gives me a much better finish. Just set my caliper so that is zero. I think I've got a bit to go yet. 1.560. Ah. It's actually got to be, it's two and three quarters long. I nearly messed up. Two and three quarters less than an inch and a quarter is going to be inch and a half. 560. So 60 so. So. And I didn't set a zero. Let me just climb that across there. Set a zero. I'll just come off that face so I don't rough it up. Let's just get another reading. Fifty-one thousand. Okay. So, back to where I was, let's take 20, 20 and a 10. And 20, 45. I think I'll take five. Reset a zero. Just come off that face a minute. <clears throat> See where we are now. I got good faith in this calipers. Four and a half five. I'm going to take that in one go. There we go. Maybe give it a little spray for fun. Set a zero there. So one point four nine nine five. That's okay because the overall length of the block was about a half though under. So yeah, that's a step done. So I had ordered some materials. Um, and they've come in a uh, piece of aluminium plate here um, I think it was 5 sixteenths or I think it was 8 mil that is what I actually ordered a uh, piece of uh, aluminium plate here 8 mil um, another piece the drawing core for half inch thick I've gone for I think 15 or 16 mil can't remember um, which is going to be the base plate for the engine I've gone for something a bit sturdier just to give it a bit of rigidity um, it's much bigger than the original sketch 
I want to mount a fuel tank on it and may want to do a few other modifications. So I'm basically going to block up this plate. Um, I think it's not way oversized. Uh, the drawing calls for a big cutout through here. I'm going to leave it as a rectangular plate, basically. Square it up, flash it over, and this will be the base plate for the engine. Um, what else have I sourced? Oh, yes. Um, for the piston, um, not the piston, the cylinder, um, drawing calls for EN1A leaded or cast iron. Um, well, the much cheaper option is, is EN1A leaded. Um, now, this engine won't be running for hours and hours. It'll be, if it's fired up ten times in its life, that'll be it, maybe once a year, you know. Um, so, I found, I basically did a search online and found on eBay bar ends. So, these are from a fastenings company. Uh, it's 40 mil, which is bigger than I want to need, but uh, what, than what I need by about a mil or so. I think 39 mil is the is the OD. But EN one A let unleaded. It's about 125 mil long. Now I bought five of these bar ends, as you can see. I've got. Oh, hang on, <laughs> I can only hold four at a time. I bought five of these for 13 pound. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's you know a couple of feet of EN one A unleaded for 13 pound bar ends okay they're not in great lengths but for uh, you know I could make several of the cylinders uh, out of those probably two out of each one but uh, at least I've got room to mess one or two up haven't I <laughs> okay so that's the material there um, again on the drawing it called for um, there were two options there was a small uh, sort of radio control model engine spark plug uh, or glow plug even um, or there was uh, an NGK uh, CR6 spark plug for the um, for the spark for the engine. So I've actually got hold of two uh, NGK CR6 spark plugs. They're M M10 by one, I believe it is. Um, but I do, I know I have the correct tap. M10 fine is what they are. But I know I have the correct tap, so that made the obvious uh, weight for me to go with the what the spark plug is going to be. So I've got two of those spark plugs. Um, I've started to make a collection of small springs. Um, you know what it's like when you take things apart or you know around work I'll find small springs lying around and what have you. Um, bits of springs. I've got a box of small springs here. I'm going to need various springs for the valves and what have you. Uh, drawing calls for them to be wound out of piano wire, but I think I'll probably uh, give that a miss and uh, see if I can find something, uh, an alternative uh, a standard spring, and uh, maybe modify the drawing to suit. So, yeah, that's where I am with that, and that's what's come in so far. So I think that's about it for this one, guys. A uh, bit of a mixed bag, bit of everything going on here. Um, I've seen the uh, finished result of the uh, key ring with the a uh, little feral in it and it looks really good um, if I can find a photo I've got a photograph sent to me uh, if I can find that photograph I will share it in the video I'm not sure I've never tried to do that before but I'm sure I'll find a way to do it one way or another I might stick a couple of hours still in at the end or maybe just after this chat anyway as per usual guys thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and we'll see you all very soon cheers now